I'm not entirely sure how to put this. In 1977, we received an incredibly strong signal from space that is the best potential candidate for aliens trying to contact Earth. Yeah, you heard that correctly. Our story starts in Ohio, more specifically the University of Ohio's Big Ear Radio Telescope, which for most of the 70s had been trying to locate potential alien signals sent in the direction of Earth. On August the 15th, 1977, at 10.16 local time, the radio telescope received a 72 second long signal from space. The usual signals the radio telescope received were ones and twos, as this is just normal background radiation, but the signal itself read 6E QUJ5, and is predicted to have come from the direction of the Messier 55 cluster of stars in the constellation of Sagittarius, which are, which are approximately 17,600 light years away, which sounds far away, because it is, but still within the galaxy. The message 6EQUJ5 doesn't really translate to an alien war declaration or oh I come in peace, it's just a readout of how powerful the signal was. The telescope readout translated signals into the numbers 1 to 9 depending on their power, and if the signals were more powerful than 9, it started counting with the alphabet. To reach U all the way down there, it has to be pretty powerful. The name the wow signal comes from the fact that the supervisor of the telescope at the time, Jerry Ehrman, was pretty surprised at the signal, so wrote wow. next to it. So big surprise, that's where the name comes from. But there's still one question that needs answering. Will you shut up and please tell us whether it's aliens or not? And honestly, I don't know. No one does. And that is really, really cool because that means it might be. Initially, people derided the claims of aliens as silly, because it kind of is, and the signal probably came from Earth. Yeah, but we can mostly rule that out as it definitely came from space, and there was no satellite that could have emitted that signal. And in any case, that wavelength is mainly not used at all, as it is dedicated to astronomy. Though I would point out, this did happen in the US, so it might have been a military project that we'll never know about because the US military isn't exactly the most transparent organisation on Earth. We never heard another one from the cluster in the nearly 50 years afterwards, which means it isn't something like a pulsar, which is regular, it was a one-off event. It's too powerful and too sudden to be a regular star, though it might be a strange exotic star that we don't know about yet, but ultimately, we don't know what we don't know, so I don't know and I can't tell you whether it is or not. The most distant habitable planet we've found is 3,200 light years away, so if aliens did send a signal to this habitable planet, then they are an awful lot better at analysing exoplanets and figuring out if they've got life on them than we are. So they're more advanced in technology. And keep in mind, this was 18,000 years ago. So uh, add that on to their technological advantage. The frequency of the signal was estimated to be around 1,420 megahertz, which is incredibly close to the spectral line for hydrogen. So either aliens chose that signal to try and point out, hey, we know what hydrogen is, we're intelligent, or it was created by hydrogen which is the most abundant resource in the universe. Yeah, so that's probably latter's more likely. But what are the chances of civilizations like these even developing? Well, to calculate this, we can use a sum called the Drake Equation that predicts the likelihood of one of these developing in our galaxy. Problem is, the values are too unknown and temperamental, so using slightly different data can tell us that we're alone in the entire universe, or there are millions of civilizations in our galaxy. So thanks for nothing, Drake. So humans operating on the logic of just in case sent a response called the Arecibo message that looks like a six year old discovered Minecraft for the first time, but actually has a lot of hidden meaning. The white parts are the numbers one to 10 in binary and the following purple part are the numbers of the elements that make up the DNA of humans. One is hydrogen, six is carbon, seven is nitrogen, eight is oxygen, and 15 is phosphorus. 
The green ba are basically instructions on how those elements are arranged in the DNA with a helpful diagram in blue and white. Oh hey look, there's a human. I recognise that bit. Either side we have the binary code telling us how tall that person is relative to the wavelength of the message because they won't know what meters are, and on the other side is the then current world population of just over 4 billion. Below we have a solar system, including Pluto. Then at last we have a small representation of the telescope that sent the message, the Arecibo telescope, which the message is named after. It's a lot of work for a civilization that may not even exist at all, but we did it just in case because recent theorising has found that the exact same signal may be produced by two recently discovered comets in a stable orbit around the Sun. They're made of hydrogen, which will explain the hydrogen spectral line similarity, and they will pass back near the Sun in 2017 and 2018. So then, 41 years later, once and for all, this mystery may be settled. If they do exist, they're probably all dead. By the time our signal arrives back there, even though the signal is travelling at the speed of light, it will be over 35 millennia later. So, humanity, I guess we tried. <laughs>